us know that there are different churches. He said to the church at Ephesus, this and that and the other. But nevertheless, I have an art against you. There's some things that need to be fixed. Well, I, I, I know that you are, you that, that, that you love me and, and, and that you are faithful to me and that you come to church every Sunday. But this is what I have against you. You better preach that thing. This is what I have against you. This is what I have against you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When people start making excuses, this ain't got nothing to do with you. When people start making excuses for why they can't come to church, is it is 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 an evidence based on what's going on in their own spirit, mm. and a lack of teaching and a lack of knowledge. Because if you had the knowledge, you would know I need to be there to undergird my pastor. Because my pastor does not have the luxury to go over here to the side and take a whole week off and go and get filled up. He has to be here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And it's been two years. Yes, I've been depleted. Yes, I felt empty. But you don't walk out and you don't leave and you don't undergird your pastor just because he's weak. And just because his and the anointing ain't as strong and the presence ain't as, oh, as high as it used to be. No, that's because I don't have the luxury to go and get filled back up without having to come right back on Sunday and pour back out again. Hmm. We'll get there one day. We'll get there. God is going to continue. The way he added you, he's going to continue to add others. If we're right, if maybe if I'm right, because the Bible said that if I'm faithful over the few that he gives me, he will add more. And one day more is going to be added. And as he's added others, you all are going to be continuing to grow. And one day you'll be able to take on certain charges. Well, I can have the luxury to go and get filled up every three or four months or every six months or something like that so that I can come back charged up, refilled to continue to feed you in the way you need to be fed. But right now, I don't have that luxury. I am a church planter. A church planter. Not somebody that walked in the church and there's 300 members and the pastor said, son, I'm turning this church over to you. <laughs> no. I have to do it myself with the help of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. And I don't have that luxury. You don't talk about the man of God. You don't, you don't, you don't not be found faithful. You pray for him. Because he's carrying a weight and a load that you will never understand unless God put you in the same place. Mm. Lord have mercy today. Mm. Lord have mercy today. Mm. It's time out for excuses. It's mm. time to become a pilot. That includes myself. Mm. That's why I'm preaching like this today. Amen. That includes myself. Because I got a charge to keep. And a God. I go, oh my God. I got souls that I must make sure that they are all right. Mm. If I can't correct you, oh my God, if I can't correct you, Lord have mercy. It's your best friend. I would have never gotten here. I would have never gotten to the place that I've gotten to in God if I was not correct. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about there's been some hard moments. Mm. It been some times when Bishop said something, Pastor said something, Pastor, no, you can't do that, or da, 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 and it hurt, and I wonder what's wrong with me. Mm. And I'm gonna say this last, and then, and then, guess what? I had, I was a minister, right? But I had the audacity to watch other folk come into the church, <laughs> and they got raised up before me, mm. and I had the audacity to think. Well, how in the world, God, he put him in place, and I've been here for eight years. I'm not eight years, because I left in eight years, but that's what God gave me to relief. I've been here for five years. I've been here for four years. They ain't been here for two or three months. They ain't been here a whole year, and they got them serving in this. Why? Because even though I, I was not consistent, mm -hmm. I came to church when I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then I had the nerve to wonder why a pastor put 
put somebody else in a position and he had been there or she had been there less time than me. Tell the truth. And I had been there all these years, but I had to get real with myself. I was not consistent. My God. Now that's the Holy Ghost. So when you want to make excuses for missing church, God. and then God begin to send folks in here and you see God put them in position and you be here for such and such time, don't get mad at me. Mm. Faithfulness pays off. Yes, it does. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I know you are blessed. I'm done. Lord. My God. But I want y'all to hear the spirit of what I'm coming to you in. I have a charge to keep. I have a, your soul, Sister Sean, your soul is the most vital, most important thing that you have. You know, I'm not saying this because you don't know it. I'm just reiterating. God don't care about how much money we got. God don't care about what kind of house we live in, what kind of car we drive. He is concerned about his soul. And that's why we need to know that. So please don't nobody be mad at me. Because this is about your soul, ultimately. It's about my own soul because guess what? The Bible says in Ezekiel 3. Come on. I'm almost done. It says in Ezekiel the third chapter, when I tell you to tell them something and you do not do it, their blood will be on your hands, Pastor. <laughs> Don't you come with this. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. 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 So I got a charge to keep. Because if I because if I just let anything happen and anything goes and then we eat high and fine, then I don't love you the way I ought to. Because I am supposed to make sure that not only myself, not only others, but myself included, that we're staying on the right and right, the up and the up, the straight and the narrow. We're foolish. And we thought that the enemy, because guess what? I looked up and said, what's happening? What's going on with our church? We're foolish if we think that the kind of anointing that rests on not just me, on your life and on the lives of God's people and the way God chose us, that we are absolutely foolish. And we thought the enemy wasn't going to try to find a way in. But now, herein is wisdom. He said, I won't have you ignorant concerning the devil's devices. This is why he's speaking to us this way, so that it can be in our minds and in our hearts, and down in our souls, that we might have open eyes and we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, that we might hear and see it for ourselves, so that as a lay person, as a parishioner, as a member of this, of this body, that you can take on the mindset, I see how the enemy had tried to come in, and I'm not going to open that door again. Mm. That's for all of us. Mm. All of us. Mm. Oh, my God. All of us. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Father, I thank you for speaking. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, I can't say it enough. i got a charge to keep. I got a responsibility to make sure that your soul is right. While also having the responsibility in my own personal relationship to make sure that I'm right. Mm. It's time for us to mature as a body of believers and understand that the enemy wants to destroy us before we ever get where God has us to go. Mm. And we, I, I, all of us ought to read. Refuse. We ought to live the kind of life that, I, that, we, that we ain't even got to open up our mouth, but that our lives and the way our posture is says to the enemy, keep a knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> because the enemy cannot gain access unless we give it to him. <laughs> he can't just kick down the door and say, here I am, and I'm about to destroy y'all. No, somebody has to open the door for him. That's with demons too. There has to be something in our soul, a window, 
a gate, something in our eye gate, something that we let in our ear gate, something that we open our souls up to before we become demon possessed. There's always an invitation. The devil can't never just kick the door in and come in. We have to give him access first. My goodness. So, Father, by the power invested in me, oh God, I said that the power of life and death is in my tongue. So, with my words, the Bible said that, the, that, that Christ cast out demons with his words. So with my very word, cleansing spirit, your cleansing blood, your cleansing power into this church, into this ministry, of the people, myself included, and we stand up against the wiles of the devil. We drive back the forces of the wicked one. We shall not be overtaken. Let the mouths and the meditations of our heart be right with you, acceptable in that sight Lord. Father, we pull down every weapon, every stronghold. We overthrow it. We subdue it. The Bible said that you have given us power in our spirits. Oh, my God. You said that we would tread upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing by any means shall harm us. It's time to get right. Because mm. the enemy is looking for one of us, or a few of us, that he can use to get access. The Bible says this. It says the enemy knows that if he can get the head, he has the ability to cut the whole body. Come on now. Because the body can't function without the head. And no, I'm not the head of the church. Christ is the head. But I am his steward that's representing his headship in this particular body. And how easy do you think that the enemy can fight against me as my enemy if the ones that are supposed to be with me and for me are fighting against me too? Whew. I'm going to just let that one sit right there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. How? It makes the enemy's work so much more easy for him. The very ones that are on my side really ain't on my side. Because I don't care how powerful, how anointed God has anointed me. I need. I need. The Bible says that when Mo Ooh, Jesus, I'm done. I'm going to say this. The Bible says that when the children of Israel went into battle, guess what? I've been in a battle. This church has been in a battle without us even really recognizing it. The Bible says, this is my last thing. The Bible says that when the children of Israel went to war, Moses held up his hands. Mm. And as long as his hands was held up, God gave them the victory. But when his arms became tired, see that's what I'm talking about. I don't have the ability to go and go somewhere and I, I, I don't have that luxury right now. But while I'm tired and while I don't have that luxury, while I'm planting this church, I need you and you and others to come alongside me. Because the Bible says as soon as he put his arms down, the Philistines, I believe it was, or whoever it was that he was fighting, they were fighting against, they gained victory. But as soon as his arms went back up, they got the victory. And the Bible says that Aaron got on one side, and another man got on the other. And they held his hands up because his hands was tired. His arms was tired. But they did not, they knew that the man of God was the one that was going to lead them into freedom. Glory to God from the very thing that had them bound. And that's some stuff as people of God that God has anointed me to help you get free from. So if you know that your freedom is in me, my God today through Christ Jesus, then come aside me and hold my hands up because my hands being held up is what's going to give you the victory. I don't. Over the things that's fighting against you. Mm. I close in the name of Jesus. Mm. I pray that you have received what thus said the Lord and in the spirit of love and in the truth in whereby it has been given. This is the day that the Lord has made. A day to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Go and peace, people. I know it's not a dismissal.
Oh. That was in my spirit, and I had to say it just like God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. My God. Not in discord. Uh -huh. Not in talking about each other. Come on. We gonna go out of here in peace. Because we got not just me, but we got a job to keep as a body of believers. Harvest is great. Amen. Amen.